Hello, dear friends. Here we are with my dear friend Flip Oaks. Flip is an incredible musician that has been playing different horn for many years. And also, as you, as you may know, he's a gray, gray trumpet, flugelhorn, cornet designer. He has been designer beautiful, beautiful horn that I got a privilege of have been playing one of his horn, which is this beautiful tool over here that he called a wild thin. Wild thin. Here's my friend Flip Oaks. Thank you for accepting to be with us today. Well, thank you for asking. Oh man, it's my pleasure to be with you as always. And we're gonna concentrate today in your brand new addition to the collection of the horn you have been designing. This one you call The Legend. The Legend. Why you call The Legend? <clears throat> because it's my tribute to the French Besson. Oh. And, and that's the horn that most of all the manufacturers started copying. What year was that you're talking? Oh, this... this Long time ago. Yeah, I, I suppose it'd be the 20s? late 30s and 40s. Late 30s, yes. I, and bef well, I'm sure before that too, but... Maybe before, yeah, yeah. So, Every manufacturer start copying those things. Well, that, well the, the, the best one was the, the granddaddy. I mean, that's what it, that was the standard. Wow. And that's, and, uh, well, and that's the reason why I call it the legend. Wow, that's Just a great, man. Tribute to, to the French Besson. And it's based on that original thing. It's based, yes, pretty much. Yes. And how, how they call, used to call that Besson, specifically that Besson model? Well, that model was called the Brevet. Brevet? Brevet. It was a Brevet. 460 bore. In the old days, the Miha was a 470 bore. Oh, or, I'm sorry, 468. 468. 468 was the Miha. This is my kind of territory. <laughs> Mine too. And, and this is, how, how big is the bore? 460. 460. Yeah, 460,000. Which is considered? It's medium large. Medium large. Yes, that's great because that, that's a, what most of the people like to play, no? That is, that's a, probably the most popular size bore that Throughout the country, that I, or throughout the world, that most throughout people play. Yeah, oh, that's that's a great idea, man. It's a medium large bore, and the, and the bell is a little smaller than the white thing, no? Yes, four, four, four seven eighths. Four, four seven eighths. Inches, right? Four and seven eighths inches. That's what it is. With well, the wild thing is a five inch bell. Five inch, yes, yes. That, both of them look beautiful, man, and uh, they're great instruments, and. Um, <clears throat> You play trumpet, cornet, flugelhorn, tenor saxophone, clarinet, banjo, ukulele. <laughs> no banjo, no ukulele. No? No. Oh. <laughs> I do play valve trombone, though. Now you say, oh, valve trombone, too? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. Lord. Yeah. I, I, I was showing my friend here, uh, by the way, the, we got two great friends here collaborating with us today, which is Mr. Dustin Hegan in the sound engineer, right. and sound engineer doing a magnific magnificent work as always, and a dear friend Keith Fiala doing the, the video. And um, I was showing a video Keith to Keith the other day of uh, me in the 70s playing a valve trombone uh -huh. with my 3C trumpet mouthpiece. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound horrible. <laughs> but that's the only Dub mouth Double mouthpieces, that, yeah. That was my only mouthpiece I got. I was lucky I got the A mouthpiece, you know, I'm talking about <laughs> way back. <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, I never tried to play that, you know, those big mouthpieces because I, uh, I, I got some problem when I go back to the small mouthpiece again. Yeah. Afterwards, that, that created a little problem for me. Yeah. What about you? Well, the doubling chops is what it is, and you have to, you have to play, you have to keep going back and forth all the time to yeah. keep your doubling chops up. It's the same thing with reeds. Like when I play tenor and then I play trumpet, if I do it enough, there's hardly any. I don't notice anything. 
Wow. But if you put one of them down for a while and don't do it for a while, then then you start that, to, that well, double yeah. thin is is could be a pain it, it, in the neck. It, yes. <laughs> yes. But anyway, you know what? I'm I'm so happy to share with new instrument with with everybody, and I, I really encourage you all to try it. Give it a try because uh, Flip don't fool around with his thing. Every time he came out with an idea or something, you better pay attention because it's something of a world class. Well, thank you. That's that's really a, a great horn. I think it's well suited absolutely for everybody who's not wanting a big open horn. That I mean, that is open. It's not that it's not, but the wild thing, of course, is more open than any trumpet. Oh yes, that that the, thing. The bell, the, the bell is the on name the said it all. Wild, uh, the, it's wild. The bell, you have noticed? Put a little up because uh, we can take it in there. Yeah. Well, if we if we put the bells like this, you'll notice that this horn here starts off large here, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger, and the throat of the bell is very large as compared to a. This is like that. a regular size. Of them. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the bell flare on this is five, and that's four and seven eighths, but it's not this is so important. It has to do with the... From here. Yeah, yeah. and the throat, the throat of this bell is so large, and that's one of the reasons why this horn gives such a big sound. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. And it also knocks out a lot of the resistance. Wow. But that horn's got the resistance, and that horn is just wonderful because you feel the resistance at the bell and not... And not up front. In the lead pipe. In the lead pipe. That's it. And the lead pipe is like a more or less exactly the, the same that Brebet was? Well, it's a, it's, it's a lead pipe that Can still makes. It's their best in the lead pipe. The best in the lead pipe. The best in the lead pipe. That's great, man. But it's really, really well constructed, you know, and I think every detail of the. I like those old things, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like it, the, the water key. Well, I wanted to keep the horn as traditional as I can. Like I say, it's a tribute to Besson. So as much like a Besson I can keep it, that's what I wanted to do. That's great. I think it's about time to let me blow a couple notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is a brand new mouthpiece. I'm going to take this opportunity to acknowledge the, the, the gentleman who did it, which is a dear friend and a and a great also trumpet maker and mouthpiece maker. This is Ben Sagren in, um, in Oregon, in Portland, Oregon. He just sent me this mouthpiece yesterday. And I start to try it this morning, and so far, I love it. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> Sometimes I try horns that uh, I really don't feel comfortable with the amount of resistance. This one is not too much. It's uh, like a, a little bit of about it, something that the horn led you to blow through. Exactly. It doesn't back. It doesn't back up, especially in your face. You, I feel the resistance right at the end of the bell. And Which that's is the uh, best uh, way, no? Yeah, that way you can you have something to blow up against, but you can push it. Yeah, I, I really don't like the horn that I feel that the horn don't let me blow, you know, and oh, don't yeah. let me put the amount of air I want to. Uh, but I didn't feel with this horn at all. This is my very first try, guys, to let you know. This is my first impression which is good. I, I'm sure as I play in this for a few days, I'm gonna feel even a, a little more comfortable, well. I guess. Explain to me why this one is round <coughs> and this one is a little more 
square. Okay, the square, the more square that is, the brighter overtones you will have. On the square? On the square. And this here is not is not that way. When I designed this horn here, the idea, first of all, I designed the horn for myself. I really had no intentions of marketing the horn. I went out and played a jazz festival, and the guy standing next to me says, let me try that. And he, well, for, we're playing like, it's like a gangbang at the end of the festival. Everybody's playing. And two of the guys put down their horns, and they looked at me and said, what the hell's that? And I handed it to him, and right away, he wanted to buy one. Wow. And I had three horns made for myself, thinking it'd last me the rest of my life. And within a week, I had to order horns because I didn't have one. That's, the, that's God's and, honest truth. And then I, I heard about, somebody told me about I was playing in San Diego, Jazz yeah. Club. Yeah. i never forget that. And I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of that guy. Oh, Nate. Nate Mills? Nate. And I said, man, I would love to try that thing. And he said, let's call Flip. He, he lived nearby. Yeah. Well, said, yeah. no kidding. And then you were so nice. You drove there. And uh, we get together in the dressing room, and I blow that horn, and I said, man, this horn feel like it have transistor inside. <laughs> like you got an, an extra an external help. <laughs> man, what is that? I, 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 I swear to God, man, I fall in love on the first side, you know, with the, with the one yeah. thing. And the thing yeah, Joyce. I, my wife Joyce brought a little camera and she videoed that. I remember. Uh, by the way, she's always uh, video uh, everything. She's got she's a good camera. At that. She's good at that. I think in a previous life she was Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, she videoed it and we've used it. You gave me permission to use anything we had. And oh, absolutely. And, and you were so nice and uh, actually engrave my name over here. Oh, yeah. Engrave my name, and it's all decorated with the beautiful uh, hand engraving. Who did that job for you? The, the, and you know, I don't remember the man's name. Yeah. But he did a wonderful job, man. The only thing I, I changed was this. It's yeah, not you're... the original. No, that's, that's right. That's the only thing I changed. This Because, to be honest, I don't know why. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. But I always prefer the okay, ring, the the, the round, uh, pinky ring that that the the how they call this hook. Yeah, finger hook, right? Finger hook. Right. Okay, I prefer this. This is okay, but for me, it's a lot more comfortable the round and the thicker because it doesn't cut the yeah, yeah. the blood circulation on the pinky when when I use the octave key. <laughs> that one pulls off harder. That was that was Wayne who told me that. He said, "Oh, that that's, that we call that the octave key." <laughs> well, that's he, funny. Yeah, he should know. <laughs> okay, and then now let me play a little bit of the same phrase on both horns. Sure, and the people gonna appreciate it and, and know. kind of so good ear to appreciate like a big difference but uh, for me both sound good yeah well the the new horn the legend because the bell is tighter it gets a tighter focus a little more yeah yeah condensed the, sound yes it's it's not is 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 big is what the wild thing is now somebody like yourself who can some people that play the wild thing, what happens is the sound gets diffused because they just don't have enough behind it. 
the air, you mean? Well, yeah, and, 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 and the, the support. The support and the airstream and, yeah, and, yeah. and the concept. And when they don't have that, the wild thing can become diffused and stuff. And, and uh, the perhaps sound, yeah, that, like a spread like a. Yeah, yeah, they just, yeah. And it's not but, it's not how loud you play it though it's 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 how you play. Yes, but that problem is not the horn. Oh no, it's the player. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in every horn doesn't matter. That's right. In every horn, we have to adapt our way of blowing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and, it, and, and, and we cannot blame. In, in other words, uh, uh, let me finish about the idea. We cannot blame. The horn, if you hear any kind of this problem or that other problem, it's better to say, you know what? The horn is fine. Let me make that kind of adaptation in my way of approach the blowing and the, the, the thing to back up the air and all those kind of things to, to please that horn and then make the best sound out of it. Right. And, and so much of it is what you, it's what I call, and I've heard you say it a million times, it's head sound. Oh. You have to hear it before you play it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you can't hear it, you can't yeah, yeah. produce it. I always say that if you have to guess, you have to imagine the kind of sound. For example, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you something here that, that I really like it. This is going to be extremely brassy and kind of a, okay. like a Louis kind of thing. Much different. It, yeah, it's this thing you have to you have to switch inside your brain. That's right. What you want to produce, what you want to hear after the bell, yeah. <laughs> not before the bell. The, the for the bell is is your business. You know, <laughs> after the bell is everybody's business. <laughs> Something else you want to illustrate or, or inform everybody about. How the distribution? How much? It, can you mention more or less the price or something? Yeah, I, this horn here, the Legend, yeah. is going to sell for twenty four ninety five. Twenty four ninety five. And that will include the case. Include the case, the brand new case that I saw already. Yeah, very it, nice. it's it's a it's a really nice case. Very it's nice. A, it's made by Protech, and it's it has a place for mutes. It has a place for the horn. It's got a shoulder strap, and it also makes it into a backpack. A back, which is very convenient when you are on the road, man. You, you have a free hands. Well, yeah, and, and, and for students, too. I mean, see, this horn, I, I'm, I know it will appeal to a real broad audience. You know, anything from a student to a, to a professional and for, uh, for guys who may be playing community orchestras and things like that. Beautiful. It's, beautiful. It's, it's, it's a very all-around horn. The distribution going to be through, I'm gonna sell, through you? Yeah, through, through, through. Your website? My website. Which is? Flipoaks.com. Flipoaks.com. www.flipoaks.com. That's right. And um, the people can uh, contact you and, uh, and do the whole operation through you. Yeah, yeah. That's great, great. And also the other things you, you sell as well, you know, the cornet, the frugal, Trumpet, B flat. That's right. C trumpet as C, well. C trumpet as well. And um, I never played a C trumpet. I never tried one. Well, I have to bring you one. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got it off with this. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what? Now I'm taking lesson of uh, with uh, uh, to learn how to get a, a decent sound in the French horn. <laughs> I love the French horn. Oh, French horn! I love it. Yeah. I love the sound. And I get one, I got a good one, I got a Con 8D. Right. Which is the same kind of horn that uh, um, um, uh, the famous uh, uh, LA guy, the, 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 the king of the French horn, oh my goodness. Uh, uh, 
Oh, Lord. I'm not much help, but I know all the great players played at Carnegie D, though. Carnegie D, man. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Oh. What is his name, Dustin? Oh, thank you, man. Bean, I'm sorry, Beans de Rosa. Beans de Rosa. Excuse me, Beans. We all love you, and, and you know. And uh, this is the same kind of horn he used to play, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he recorded thousands of movies with that 8D. And um, I'm in mission, you know. Uh, not yet, and I got a long way to go to, to get a decent sound. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm trying because I, I love the sound of the but a C trumpet, I never tried. The cornet, I love it. I, I have one of yours yes. with the copper bell. Right. Which is a beautiful cornet. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I, I'm not a specialist in cornet, but I tried a few of them. But as so far, yours is fell apart of the all uh, the all of them that I tried before. Yes. It's, a, it's a beautiful instrument. Beautiful instrument. Yeah, you have the little shepherd's crook. It, it does, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what what the thing does? Well, okay. If you think about it, if you're talking about coronets, um, the American model coronet is is elongated, is, is, is a longer horn. Okay. What I'm getting at, and the, and the shepherd's crook has a my shepherd's crook has a shorter bell on it. Shorter. Which means it's the, the shepherd's was, crook has a longer lead pipe. But it was wound up. Explain to people who doesn't know what a shepherd crook is. Shepherd's crook would go down like this and come back up. Made like a like big that. curve, a big curve. A big curve, right? A curve down the the, the beginning of the, of the bell. Yeah. But here's the thing: what people don't understand with my horn is, if you if if this were a cornet and if the bell were cut at this point here, think of the letter V. Whatever the bore is here is what goes into the horn. Which is a little bigger yeah. at that point. Yeah, which is bigger, right. A little bigger, yeah. All right, so now if you take mm -hmm. this bell, if it's a shepherd's crook, if it's a shorter bell, it means it's cut up here. Oh. So it's even bigger yet. So the shepherd's crook, even though it's a 470 bore, the same as the American model, the shepherd's crook is a, is, is a bigger horn, it's warmer, it's 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 a the the American model is a very free blown horn. Yeah. But the Shepherd's Crook is even more free blowing. More free blowing. That's very interesting. And it gets a bigger gets a bigger sound. Warm kind of sound. Because where where the bell's cut. Uh, what kind of mouthpiece this came with? Well, Your own mouthpiece? Yeah, I have my own series of mouthpieces. I have two cornet mouthpieces. I have one that's 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 really deep. And uh it has a the deep one sound. Number eight years, you know, yeah. Then I make an extreme one, which is really deep. I and, got one of those, and it's and I use it on the trumpet. <laughs> and it has a number 11 throat, I believe, on the on the cornet mouthpiece. 11 throat on the cornet, yeah. On, 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 the, on the extreme model, it's a V, v cup. Oh, yes, they're both V cups, it's just extreme, it's deeper, and it has a bigger, bigger throat. 11 is a big one, yeah. That's the same as the. That's the same as the extreme mouthpiece you have for the yeah, trumpet. Yeah, that's the eleven throat. Absolutely, and I love that mouthpiece. Now what? my extreme flugel mouthpiece has a quarter inch. <laughs> the I, throat's at a quarter of an inch, I, but I, it's very efficient. It plays. I used to play flugel horn, not anymore. But when I record it or when I use it, uh, the flugel horn that's the mouthpiece I use always. Your mouthpiece, yeah, which is a huge throat. Throat. <laughs> the throat is one, no. It's bigger than one, it's a quarter inch. Quarter inch. <laughs> quarter inch throw. The sound is whoa. I love it. Because to be honest, this is not have nothing to do with this, but I want to make a comment because some people are gonna appreciate to understand at least my point of view on this is like a what is the reason to play the full flugel horn is uh, gonna sound similar to a trumpet? That's right. I I see no that for me that don't make sense at all. You say if you're gonna switch to the fluger, I'm gonna sound similar to the trumpet. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I, I, that's my concept too. The same. I want trumpet to sound like trumpet, 
Cornet sound like a cornet. Yeah. And a flugelhorn sounds like a flugelhorn. Yes. Flugel has to be completely distinctive sound. M must be a lot, a lot thicker and warmer than the trumpet sound. To yes. make sense. That's right. But otherwise, I, 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 I hear some people playing the flugel and sound like a trumpet. I say, man. That's that's not the reason of the invention of that instrument. On occasion, you hear somebody on a radio station, you know, playing a jazz tune. You think, ah, oh, that's a wonderful trumpet sound. Then you find out that the guy was playing a flugelhorn. <laughs> that's that's happened many times. Yeah, but well that that doesn't make sense. Well, no, it doesn't. No, 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 no. no. Do you want it? Add another thing that the people should know about uh, the whole the whole thing about uh, the the line of instrument that you have and uh, and uh, opportunities for different. You have you have like a student model too or not? Well, no, I don't have a student model, no. but that's that's the reason why I brought the the legend out because that's a horn that that if you started off on that horn and, and took care of it, it should last you. Pretty much your playing career. Your lifetime. If you take care of it, you know. Absolutely, yeah. You know. And, and down the future, you you thinking about maybe to come out with a student model, which the price is going to be a little more... Uh, no, the stu no, I don't think I'll do no. a student model. No? Um, that's annoying your... Well, that's a one-piece bell and everything. When you're talking about student model horns, you're talking about usually two-piece bells. Um, like they sold it together or something? Yeah. Yeah, the, this part of the bell's made. It's, of course, it's straight before it's bent. And then this, then this part of the bell's made, uh, the flare. And right about here, they put the two together. They uh, sold it another piece from here? Yeah, it has a ring around it. Wow. Where, you, where, where this horn. I didn't know that. If you notice on the copper horns, people will call me and they'll say, I got a yellow mark on my on my bell. Well, that's where they braised the bell because it's the whole up, thing. The whole thing has a yellow mark running all through it. Yeah. Of course, you can't see it on a brass bell, but on a copper bell, you can see it. Yeah. And, and that's this, how they that's how that's how they make. I know this bell. one came in in different kind of in silver plate. Sure. Yeah. The, I mean the white thing, silver plate, lacquer, a, a lacquer and gold plate and gold on plate. on uh, request. You no. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold plate's a special order. A special well. order. I used That's to stock I mean. gold plated horns, but gold's become so expensive, I, I no longer do. And what about this one? Same option? Same, same thing. Lacquer, uh, silver plate, or if somebody wanted to gold plate it, we could have a gold plated. Exactly. That's okay. That's good. So. I think we cover more or less the information, man. Flip, thank you so much, man. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Thank you so much for the opportunity a, to. Let everybody know what you doing and your new instrument, which is uh, I'm very pleased and, and, and proud to help you to promote it and to let everybody know that it's out already and it's available already. It's available. On request. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're having some made right now. So Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, guys, for your attention and... Uh, Good luck and don't forget the most important trick is practice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay, man. Bye bye, guys. Thank you, Arturo. <laughs>